Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dave Christensen and welcome. I'm the director of the Harvey Milk Photo Center and the curator of this special dedication today we have online. The Harvey Milk Photo Center has been part of the San Francisco Recreation and Parks Department for over 78 years. Today, we are honoring David Johnson, photographer with his virtual dedication for the David Johnson Library, which is located now at the Harvey Milk Photo Center, 50 Scott Street in San Francisco. We are currently close to the public, but look forward to opening later in this fall. At this time, I'd like to introduce Phil Ginsburg, our general manager of the San Francisco Recreation and Parks Department. Thank you, Dave. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Mr. Johnson. It is a pleasure to see you. It really is. And to everyone gathered here, uh, for those that don't know me, uh, uh, my name is Phil Ginsburg, and I'm the general manager of the San Francisco Recreation and Park Department. And I am calling in today from uh, up by Mount Lassen, where uh, uh, I am enjoying nature and uh, even doing a little fishing, Mr. Johnson. Um, I haven't been very successful yet. Um, before I start, I do want to thank Dave Christensen, Chris Betcher, Melissa Kieser, Elena Norbert Brown. Uh, for putting today's webinar together. And I'm just really touched and honored to welcome you all to the David Johnson Library dedication as we celebrate uh, this wonderfully talented artist, photographer, uh, human being, uh, husband, uh, community member. Um, we are uh, really, this is a big thrill for us. Uh, throughout the next hour, you'll learn about uh, David's love and passion for capturing the lives of the African-American Fillmore community uh, before the redevelopment years in the 1960s. You'll also learn of his formative years as the first African-American student under the tutelage of Ansel Adams. Uh, David has been the subject of documentaries. He's had photography books published, received numerous awards for his contributions to the world of photography and I don't want to steal anyone's thunder because we've got a great panel of experts who are waiting to talk about uh, your many contributions, David. Um, but this is a very significant uh, moment. And because of your significant uh, contribution to creating uh, an educational opportunity to capture the rich history of the Fillmore, on October 3rd, 2019, the San Francisco Recreation and Park Commission unanimously recognized the film processing lab at the Harvey Milk Photo Center, the David Johnson Photo Processing Lab, uh, and also uh, created a photography reference library and reading space in the lobby of the Harvey Milk Photo Center. So today we are dedicating the photography reference library and reading space. And then once the photo center opens in the fall, we will formally rename the lab uh, and hopefully be able to celebrate you, Mr. Johnson, uh, in person with your friends, your family, your community, um, the various dignitaries, and to give you the um, celebration uh, that you really, really deserve. Um, so I really, just on a, on a personal moment, we've had the opportunity to, to meet a few times. Um, uh, and I, I just couldn't thank you enough for your contributions to San Francisco. Thank you. Thank you very much. On behalf of the commission, half of our mayor, London Breed, I have a certificate of honor that I want to present to you today. And if Melissa, you can put it on the screen, I will read it. Uh, from our mayor, uh, honoring David Johnson today, June 26, 2021. Whereas on behalf of the city and county of San Francisco, I am pleased to recognize and honor David Johnson. The dedication of the David Johnson Photo Library featuring hundreds of photo reference books for visitors is a testament of your powerful work capturing the vibrant lives of so many neighbors in the Fillmore Western edition over the years. From photography of people dancing in jazz clubs to children playing at parks and churches. You've captured the essence and experience of African-Americans in San Francisco. When we look at the history books and talk about the Harlem of the West, 
your photographs are the one that documented our stories. In addition, your years of dedication to uplifting others through community work and engagement is truly commendable and represents San Francisco values at their best. Uh, therefore, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the city and county of San Francisco to be affixed, London and Breed, mayor of the city and county of San Francisco. Congratulations, Mr. Johnson. And I will uh, turn it back to, to Dave to walk us through the remainder of the program. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Phil. Major congratulations, David Johnson. That is an amazing award. Um, I'd like to say in 2014, I had the good fortune to curate and create an exhibit at the Harvard Health Photo Center showcasing David Johnson's photo retrospective, which was an amazing journey along with the co my co-curator, Susanna Lucia Lamina. We knew instantly as we unpacked the many, many boxes of David's work that this collection was a historic treasure. It was like excavating a treasure in Egypt in a way, but it was here in San Francisco. Here was this body of very important work, historical work laying out on the tables, looking up at us. We knew instantly this collection needed to be exhibited and well-preserved. We are so honored to have David Johnson and Jacqueline Sue with us today. Without further ado, I give you David Johnson and Jacqueline Sue. Thank you very much. We are excited about what is, is happening at the moment. We've been looking forward to it for a long time. And the people in, in, in that city uh, will be uh, pleased to see one of its own uh, uh, on talk about problems problems as well as successes uh, that's going on in our city now, which is a little different from the time than when I, when I came there as a result of, of being in the service in, in, the, in the US Navy. That's where I was first started to be trained. And I had a very exciting time and successful time living and, and, and photographing in San Francisco. It was, it's, it's the joy of my life and I, I feel very good that I, I utilize my, 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 my talent in a way that I could show the people, this is a fine city and I'm, I'm here living there. And I'm also in the military there. That's kind of how I would start out talking about what was it like living in San Francisco. And I, I have good stories to tell them. And I utilize my, my photography to tell the story. It's a wonderful city and I'm happy. And God gave me the skills and all that I could talk about it later. And I was a, could be around that long. And I'm very excited and my wife and I are pleased that this is happening. Thank you, David. Okay. First there, of all, sir? David and I would like to uh, start by offering our gratitude uh, to everyone. We're thankful for all the people who stood by us to advocate to the city to honor David. For those who signed petitions, who wrote in and came to City Hall to speak on his behalf. We're especially thankful to Barbara Thompson for her efforts to navigate the city. Without all of you, this would not have come to fruition. Mayor London Breed, for her support of David, going back to her days leading the African American Cultural Complex. <laughs> to Phil Ginsburg, you just heard speak. His staff, including Sarah Madeline, Lamont Bishop, as well as the San Francisco Recreation and Park Commissioners who approved this honor. To Chris Bocher, 
and Alana Norberg Brown, who led community meetings. Our long-term supporters and friends and sponsors, uh, many of whom will be speaking on this program. Jeff Gunderson, librarian and historian at the San Francisco Art Institute. Victoria and Ken Ball, Golden Decade authors. Dr. Christine Hewitt Lewis, UC Berkeley, Bancroft Library. Aperture, Aperture, I'm sorry, magazine. Lewis Watts, Harlem of the West author, and to all of our children and family, Candace Sue and Michael Johnson. Finally, I want to, and also I mustn't forget the contribution of Harvey Milk himself and his importance to the city, the LGBT communities, which we celebrate pride today and other dis in franchise groups. Finally, I want to give thanks to Dave Christensen, the director of the Harvey Milk Center, who put on this wonderful show in, in 2014 and now has now shepherded his dishonor so that it will come about to today's event. It's been a long road and we're deeply grateful to Dave for everything he's done. Now, I've known Dave Johnson for the entire time I've lived in San Francisco and the Bay Area since the 1950s. His first wife, Lucy, and I were best friends, and our families have intertwined for decades. David has always been an inspiration, one who could reach out and help someone get on a better path. But I didn't know how much he'd achieved in his life until I wrote his photo biopic, A Dream Began So Long Ago. <laughs> David is being honored today for his photography, but he has done so much in his life, especially for the black community and his fight for civil rights, has, which has benefited everyone who has come afterwards. His contributions to the city at a time when life for African Americans was extremely limited has been nothing short of extraordinary. He helped unionize the United States Postal Service. He is a founder and the first president of UC San Francisco's Black Caucus, which is still representing minority staff today. He was president of the Hate ashbury Merchants Association. And in 1970, little as it's known, he bought suit against the San Francisco Unified School District, winning the landmark case that led to integration in the city's schools. He was at the first march on Washington and photographed the people there and David is a World War II veteran. I will end by saying Dave's civic work and his photography is more than most people will achieve in a lifetime. Thank you very much for this honor. Thank you, Jackie, Sue, and David Johnson. It is a, it is a wonderful honor and we're very honored to have you here with us today as well. Um, next, Christine Holt Lewis is the interim, interim pictorial curator at the Bancroft Library. She has worked there for the last seven years as an assistant curator as well as a curator of the Reva and David Logan photo book collection. She has a PhD in American Studies with an emphasis in photographic history from Boston University. She co authored the award winning study of the 19th century landscape photographer, Carlton Watkins, Carlton Watkins, the complete mammoth photographers, published by Getty in 2011, and has taught classes and published several articles on Watkins and the West. Most recently, she, she contributed an essay on women's photo books in the post-World War II period for the forthcoming book, What They Saw, Historical Photo Books by Women, 1843 to 1999 to be published by a 10 by 10 books this fall. 
Christine has worked closely with David Johnson and Jackie Sue over the last few years, assisting with providing rights and or reproductions of David's work, curating several Bancroft exhibits, exhibitions that drew on his photographs, publicity, and supporting the, rena the rena renaming of the photo lab at the Harvey Milk Photo Center in honor of David Johnson and serving as the in-house expert on David Johnson at the Bancroft. We're honored to present Christine Holt Lewis. Hi, thank you so much, Dave. It's really a pleasure to be here today to talk about David Johnson's work and its significance to the scholarly community and the larger research community. The Bancroft Library is incredibly proud to have David's photographic archive of over 5,000 prints and negatives. The pictorial collection at Bancroft has approximately 10 million items, including negatives, and it's one of the largest pictorial collections in a research library in the country, second only to the Library of Congress. Uh, our collecting mandate encompasses the history of the entire American West, uh, West of the Mississippi, concentrating primarily on California, the Pacific Coast, and Mexico from the late 18th century to the present day. While we have collected older photographs from the 19th and 20th centuries for quite some time, in recent years, we've really focused on collecting photo archives that record the political, cultural, and socioeconomic changes of the more recent times. The David Johnson Photograph Archive is one such collection. And it's actually our first major archive by an African-American photographer in the Bancroft Library. We have other works by black photographers and certainly pictures of black individuals and communities, but nothing as comprehensive as David's images of San Francisco and the Fillmore district in the mid 20th century. Uh, I was fortunate enough to meet with, uh, to meet David and Jackie Sue back in 2015 when our then pictorial curator, Jack Von Oy, um, was in touch with them regarding his work. Jack had seen David's work at a gallery in San Rafael, the Smith Anderson North Gallery. And we had both read Jackie's book, A Dream Begun So Long Ago. Um, fortuitously at the same time, David and Jackie's friend, Dorothy White contacted the library to see if we had any interest in acquiring his photographs. So we got in touch with, uh, with David and Jackie and we went to their home, looked at David's wonderful photographs, talked for a long time and reminisced about his pictures and formed a nice friendship. Uh, we were very impressed with David's photographic eye and his uncanny ability to capture the perfect moment with his camera. Uh, David's prints are also quite beautiful. His training by master photographer Ansel Adams and Minor White at the California School of Fine Arts was very evident in the quality of his black and white gelatin silver prints. So we then were able to acquire the archive in 2016. And since that time, our archivists have been cataloging and processing the collection to make it available to, to researchers from around the world. Um, we've also included David's work in recent exhibitions. Um, we've published some articles on his work in our library publications. And there's a nice long interview with David and Jack Von Oy um, from a couple of years ago that is actually on the UC Berkeley Library YouTube page. So it's a wonderful interview where David really talks a lot about his pictures. Um, so I encourage you to check that out. David was a gifted chronicler of African-American life in the Fillmore and San Francisco for, four, for over four decades. And he was the best kind of witness to his time. He had a curious mind, a keen eye for detail and composition and a camera. His photographs, as Dave Christensen said earlier, are a real treasure. Uh, David Johnson had his own private studio, but he was also a photographic journalist for the Sun Reporter. As such, he had access to some of the biggest names in town in San Francisco, as well as celebrated cultural figures that came through town, including Langston Hughes, Eartha Kitt, Nat King Cole, and other luminaries. He photographed major political events, including civil rights demonstrations, um, the aftermath of the Watts riots, and other such things. But of equal and arguably even more importance um, is the way that he photographed the, for, the folks, photographed the folks who lived and worked in the Fillmore. He captured the intimate and unguarded moments of life on the streets, in the barbershops, in the churches, in the nightclubs, everywhere. He also captured some historic firsts, like the first black supervisor, Terry Francois, um, Willie Brown's first political victory in 1963 
and even the first black bank teller in San Francisco. In so doing, he created the most important historic archive of black life in San Francisco in the middle part of the 20th century. All of these factors combine to ensure that his work has great historic significance. His pictures show the importance of bearing witness to the times, especially to the lives of ordinary people, especially black people whose lives were, have gone unnoticed for far too long. His photographs contain multiple stories. Uh, the wonderful picture that's behind David and Jackie's um, little screen there is, is the intersection of the post at Post and Geary in San Francisco. And it's about that street corner, but it's also about urbanization in San Francisco. It's about the costs of gentrification and redevelopment. Uh, it's about the ways that race plays into decisions about which neighborhoods get torn down and which ones don't. Um, it's a very richly layered photograph, as are all of his pictures. Having, and having David's archive at the Bancroft is crucially important for those writing histories of our era. As we have seen in these past years, representation matters. Now, as I said at the beginning of my little talk here, David's archive is the first one at the Bancroft by a Black photographer about the Black community, but it certainly won't be the last. We are actively interested in acquiring more works by underrepresented communities and individuals. Special collections libraries in general are undergoing a real cultural shift, one that is more inclusive of a much wider diversity of people and ideas. In a very real sense, libraries are the keepers of culture and we're committed to making these materials, uh, these primary documents, these photographs of a specific time and place available to everyone. Photographs help give meaning to history and David's photographs are exemplars of this. We were closed for a while, but the Bancroft Library is open once again to the public uh, by appointment and we welcome researchers interested in David's work. And I invite you to contact me if you're interested in learning more about this extraordinary collection. Thank you so much. Thank you, Christine. Um, next, Jeff Gunderson has been the librarian and arch archivist at the San Francisco Art Institute since 1981. He has written on the history of California photography, the Sa San Francisco art scene of the 1940s, and done presentations on artists Joan Brown, Elmer Bischoff, Ed Rushka, Charles Howard, and the history of LGBTQ art in San Francisco, the history of the Bay Area conceptual art, and the influence of art libraries on artists. He also did the introductory essay to Black Power, Flower Power, photographs by Perkle Jones and Ruth Marion Baruch. He is currently working on a collection of essays about open water swimming. Jeff has an amazing essay in the book, The Moment of Scene, Minor White at the California School of Fine Arts published in 2006 by Chronicle Books. I'd like to introduce to you, Jeff Gunderson. Thank you, Dave. And thank you, Melissa. And thank you, Phil, for organizing all this. And thank you to the Harvey Milk Center. And happy Pride, everybody. Um, I also wanted to acknowledge Dave Christensen's wonderful work here at the Harvey Milk Center. You know, I assume in your retirement, Dave, you will not stray too far <laughs> and continue to contribute your knowledge and your expertise, your passion and your photo for photography and for your community. Um, you really did find an interesting place to land, Dave, and you made it more interesting, which is a really tribute to you. So thank you very much for doing that. Thank you so much, Chuck. Um, it's really terrific to be here as a librarian and somebody who likes photography and to, um, honor David, my longtime friend, David Johnson, as well as libraries and the Harvey Milk Center for taking on this great name, adding this name to their, um, to their, uh, uh, to their organization there. So this is really a great, it's a real treat for me. Um, David is somebody who does touch on, I'm glad that Jackie mentioned different things that David has touched upon because he has touched on a lot of different things. We th I think of him, I fell into this by um, meeting Perkle Jones at the San Francisco Art Institute and learning about the history of that photography department. 
And everyone was very interested in the very beginnings of it with Ansel Adams, with Minor White, with Imogen Cunningham, Dorothea Lang, Lizette Modell. But the most, one of the most interesting parts of it were all those students that were there. And it included people like Perkle Jones and Ruth Marion Baruch and um, uh, Don White, um, Benjamin Chin, uh, Charles Wong. And it, the list goes on and on of these really fascinating people. One of which, as fascinating as any of them, is of course, David. David wasn't just the only African-American in that very first class with Ansel, but he was, I think, the youngest member of that class, even though he had served in World War II in a segregated Navy and had come from, you know, probably some of the worst of the Jim Crow South in Florida at the time. Um, and he wound up with this great group of luminaries within the photographic world, as well as this cohort of fascinating fellow students that were mature beyond their years, that were wrestling with not only uh, what they were gonna do in their lives, but what had just happened. You know, they were wrestling with the fallout of the atom bomb. They were wrestling with the end of the Holocaust. And in some of their cases, the two world wars that had happened in their lives. And this is what, the, what wound up happening. It was like a graduate school that Minor White would write about. And it truly was these, uh, interesting, fascinating photographers with great skills and great eyes and great vision. Um, Christine mentioned um, the moment of uh, David capturing a specific moment. And I think of that Cartier Bresson, um, the decisive moment book that he did. And David is very much of that. And, he, and David's work actually precedes the book, The Decisive Moment by Cartier Bresson. But when you look at these photographs, I'm so glad these photographs are scrolling through here. But they're, some of them are portraiture, but they're really about that moment in time, that context of that portraiture as well. Whether it's um, the people at civil rights demonstrations, whether it's people in the Fillmore, whether it's kids playing, whether it's people at jazz concerts. And it's um, the one image that I always love is that one of the two people dancing where you know, he has, he has his uh, handkerchief in his pocket and, he, and she's clicking her fingers, right? It's snapping her fingers at the same time. But that comes from being able to see through David's eyes. And it's been so wonderful to have this remnant of David's great photography and seeing through his eyes through all of these years. Um, it, David mentions in his book that he, he, it felt like dropping down a rabbit hole into all these luminaries within photography and how lucky he was to have that. But I think we are the lucky ones to have crossed paths with David Johnson and have the legacy of this photography of his because we get to be the uh, recipients of all that great work that he has always done. And it's so wonderful to have this library named after him with these wonderful images that you know grace it in these in these photographs that are scrolling through now. So thank you very much, Harvey Milk Center and Dave. And thank you very much to Melissa for everybody who's put this on. And most of all, thank you, David, for doing all those wonderful things that you've done, whether it was within the photography world or all that great work that you did at UCSF as well, which has been an inspiration to our oldest daughter who works at UCSF and has given her great ideas to do things too. So congratulations, David. Thank you, Jeff. That was um, so well put. We so appreciate your comments and being with us today. Um, next, I'd like to introduce Stephen Goldstein. Stephen was the former president of the San Francisco Art Institute and the California Arts College of, of the Arts um, and, and head of graduate studies at CCA. I have such fond memories of sitting up in his house one afternoon, having copious amounts of tea, discussing photography for endless hours with him and talking about the many incredible photographers that graced the Art Institute and that he was associated with. It was a real treat to spend time with Stephen and discuss these amazing photographers. And many of the works were scattered around the room as we sat there 
on that sunny afternoon discussing photography, looking at books, and just relishing in that moment. That afternoon, I had the pleasure to spend that time with you, Stephen. And it's something I always treasure. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to present Stephen Goldstein. Hi, oh, I'm Stephen Goldstein, and I was president of the San Francisco Art Institute between 1970 and 1978. And it was a period in which I rediscovered David's extraordinary contribution. It turns out when David and I were both at the Art Institute in 1951, he was the uniquely black student of the Institute. And I was 13 years old, the next youngest student in the program of the zone was 20 years old. The culture of photography and the Art Institute has always been extremely rich and it compares to the strongest learning situation in photography in this country. David Johnson was really unique Nobody at his time had photographed with such a sensitive eye and such a deep understanding of his community. Later in the Golden Age book, which uh, is a deep rendition of what was going on in the first five years of the program, David's work stands out as both revealing the community he lives in and his unique reaction to it. Um, since then, there have been lots of black photographers in the program, as well as painters and filmmakers. And among them is Lonnie Graham, who is currently chair of the board of the San Francisco Art Institute and made extraordinary contributions as a student. So the, David has really started a rich tradition in which literally dozens of Black artists, painters, and photographers have participated. It turns out when the um, contribution of the president's photographs and paintings was put together in Washington and stands as a permanent influence of their great participation, that the work of Obama is honored in one such painting. So right to the present, the role of Black photographers, Black filmmakers, and Black painters has followed in the great tradition of David Johnson, who from the time he first appeared was felt as a great force especially in the documentary contributions of San Francisco. This honor is greatly deserved and David is a treasure. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stephen. We're so honored to have you with us today. Next, I'd like to introduce Victoria White Ball and Ken Ball Victoria White Ball is co-editor with her husband, Ken Ball, of the beautiful book, The Golden Decade, Photography at the California School of Fine Arts, 1945 to 55. She has worked as a graphic designer, as a piano teacher. Her life has been steeped in art, photography, and music. Her father, Don White, was a student at the same time as David Johnson, 
was at the California School of Fine Arts in the late 1940s. Ken Ball has made a living as a scientific illustrator, a graphic artist and photographer. He has also owned an art gallery, has curated, designed many art and scientific exhibits. He co-edited with his wife, Victoria, the book, The Golden Decade, photography of the California School of Fine Arts, 1945 to 1955. I'm very proud to present Victoria White Ball and Ken Ball. Thank you. Um, hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Welcome. Everyone. I'm so happy that we're honoring David Johnson today. He's, as we've been hearing, he's a clear inspiration of what a person of passion can do, even under extreme circumstances. Ken and I first met David in 24, 2004 when we went to his photo exhibit at the Merced Multicultural Center. We were by then working on the book, The Golden Decade with Bill Hike, Cameron McCauley, Ira Latour and Ben Chin about their experiences at the California School of Fine Arts. We were trying to find as many of the students from that time as possible to include in the book. David was one of the first photographers we went looking for. My dad, Don White, who died in 1989, had attended the CSFA at the same time as David after World War II on the GI Bill. Photos show them attending many classes together taught by Ansel Adams, Minor White, Dorothea Lang, Edward Weston, Imogen Cunningham, Nancy and Beaumont Newhall, Lisette Modell, and many of the other luminaries working and teaching then in the photographic world. David said that Minor White was his greatest supporter at that time. Well, thank everyone for inviting us to be here. It is so wonderful to see David and Jackie. And um, we have been honored to uh, be part of their lives um, for many years now. Um, we have always been in awe of David because of his photographic legacy but the more that we got to know him and the more we talked to him and his family and other people, we found out uh, how much he had actually done, all of the civil rights work and, uh, and, and so many experiences and travels. And um, we just became more in awe. So not, not only because of his photography, but for just a wonderful human being and all of these accomplished. And um, we ha had the honor to uh, be friends with David and have him uh, take me around San Francisco to all of the places that he photographed and uh, look at the changes that have happened and talk to him about the people and the events and um, you know, just his life from after coming back from World War II and, and a key thing I think in for not only him, but many of the students after World War II was the GI Bill uh, because most of these students probably would not have been able to go to college if it wasn't for the GI Bill. And that, um, you know, was really a, uh, benefit to the students and also to the whole nation. When you think of all that has come out of the education of all of those uh, veterans. Um, when he came out, came back through San Francisco, um, went back to Florida and he said that he loved being in San Francisco and in the Bay Area and he missed it. And he saw a advertisement uh, in a photo magazine that Ansel Adams was uh, starting a school. And um, he saw this, David saw this as a way to, to return to San Francisco and also to, uh, to be able to fuel his passion for photography. So he wrote to Ansel, asked him if there was a 
place in the class. Uh, he said no, but he would let him know if there was a, a place was open. Um, a week or so later, he got a telegram saying that there was a spot and it was his, his if he wanted it. So he went out, uh, took the train to San Francisco. He was met at the station by Minor White and taken to Ansel's house where, um, and this was before the classes had started. So he lived at Ansel Adams' house with Minor and um, several of the other students. And I think he was there for a, a number of weeks um, before the school started and still lived there for a while after and was able to have one-on-one -on -one time with Minor and with, um, with Ansel. And, uh, and he also mentioned that this was the first time that he had ever, being from the Deep South, this was the first time that he have, had ever attended uh, classes with um, white people. So, um, you know, th this was an amazing, amazing time after the war at the school, not only in the photography department and all of the fantastic uh, teachers and students, um, but also in the art department there. So, I mean, it was, the, it was just this heady time of this wonderful staff that probably could never be put together again. So he was very fortunate to uh, have gone to school there. And we are all very fortunate that he was there and that he um, photographed, uh, he photographed the, the Fillmore district. He said that he wasn't so much interested in, in landscapes and when he asked them about what he should photograph, they said, photograph what you're passionate about. And so he did. Uh, and all the wonderful photos of, of the Fillmore district and of the jazz uh, scene. So, um, so we were all very fortunate of that. And I'm just uh, so amazed and pleased that David is really being honored and his contributions in so many ways are, um, are being recognized. Uh, long due. And it's so wonderful to see you, David. And thank you very much. Thank you, Ken. And thank you, Victoria. Um, I can't thank you enough personally for not only getting to know you over this uh, period over the fall and uh, spring and summer, but the work that you both contributed to the, the book and the golden decade and what you give and have given and are giving to the art and photographic community is really invaluable. The book, The Golden Decade is a treasure. I cannot state that enough. I urge people to get a hold of a copy of it and you'll understand when you open the book of what I'm talking about. It is a legacy that you should be both very, very proud about. So thank you so much for working on that project with such heart and soul. Um, I'd also like to tonight, to this afternoon, thank David Johnson for his contributions. Um, reminiscing about the, the project, I would like to share that when we did the exhibit at Harvey Milk Photo Center, David Johnson's spirit of generosity came through every time we interacted with the selections when we were curating that show, that exhibit. Um, incredible, incredible body of work that was just, it was just like a Christmas, it was like Christmas morning um, over and over and over again, because there were boxes and boxes and boxes of, of images and things that came in. So thank you for the contribution. Thank you for your sharing your beautiful eye and your talent. I'm very grateful for um, Minor White and for Ansel for their generosity that helped make this thing happen with 
your learning process and your education. I think the work that they have both done is invaluable to society and humanity. Um, thank you, Jackie Sue, for all the support that you've given. I'd like to thank Christine Helt Lewis today, um, Jeff Gunderson, Stephen Goldstein, Victoria Whiteball, and Ken Ball. I'd like to make a special thank you to Chris Betcher, our cultural divisions manager at SF Rec and Parks Department, for his donation of the bookcases and his carpentry magic that made that happen. Thank you so much, Chris, for that. Melissa Kisor, who is behind the scenes, helped us with the webinar process here. She is the current visual and digital arts program coordinator of the Cultural Arts Division of San Francisco Recreation and Parks Department. I'd like to make a special thank you to Aperture Books for their credible donation of photography books. We so appreciate their donation to this beautiful new library, the David Johnson Photo Library. To Casper, who is responsible for our website and the beautiful layout on this project, thank you so much. Laura Pizan, our graphic designer, who, who designed the beautiful poster and online graphic. Chris Gould, who helped with organizing the books in the library. Amy Yum, who assisted with our MailChimp and promotions. And I'd also like to mention today, we have a nonprofit in place called the Friends of Harvey Milk Photo Center. We have this incredible, vibrant photography center now, and now this beautiful photo library honoring David Johnson. Your generous support and donations are important as we move into this next chapter of reopening this fall. Your donations are really important. You can find our information about donating on our website. Thank you all for joining us today. It has really been a pleasure to have you all here. I'm going to look at the Q&A to see if there's any questions that I can answer at this time. And um, there is a note here from a Robert Hoffmeister. It says, it's, a true pre it's truly a treasure to have this history remembered and recorded for future generations. David's granddaughters are listening. Thank you, Jeff Gunderson and Stephen Goldstein. Thank you, Robert. Um, here's one from Violet Mitchell that says, thanks for this event. We wish we could express our gratitude via chat. Thank you so much, Violet. Um, any other questions I'm happy to answer directly. Terry Woodward says, David is a treasure. That is for sure. We are so blessed to have his work and to have him here with us today. Let me see if I can get through this and read this at the same time. Um, Let's see, it says Elba Clemente Lambert or Lambe. I'm a longtime friend of David since 69. I worked with him at UCSF personnel office and I'm an original member of the UCSF Black Caucus. Great to see him being acknowledged, especially photography. He's in, inspired and influenced me and some of my work is at UCSF's library archives depic depicting Black Caucus milestones and events. Thank you so much, Elba. Um, Charles Coleman, I have two of my grandkids watching. This is our history. Thank you for being part of it, Charles. Lewis Watts is with us. David's book is sold out. Does anyone have any ideas of a publisher that could republish it? It needs to be back out in the world. Lewis, I didn't know it was sold out. Is the Golden Decade sold out? Do you know, um, Victoria? For Ken? It, it is not. No, I think they may be talking about the David's book, um, the A Dream a So, dream so, long. so long. Yeah. Yes, I understand. Um, I understand that that book is going to go into reprint according to Jackie Sue. Um, yes, it will be reprinted in the fall. Here's one from Terrence Tum Tumbell. It is the greatest pleasure to have David and Jackie Sue at our community in Marin. First day at work, he was the first one to show me his photo book. David and Jackie Sue are the nicest people. I'm so honored to know them both. Congratulations from Susan Yip. Thank you for this presentation. Wonderful presentation from Wina. 
Barron. Congratulations, David. Thanks for your sharing your photographs with us. Your photographs chronicle an important part of our country's history. Um, let's see, wonderful tribute to David by Staten. It says, wonderful tribute to David's talents. Thank you so much for those uh, comments. We thank everyone for being part of this today. This will be recorded. We will get this up on our website once we get it transposed. Um, does the panel have any questions today for us or anybody else? I think we're all good. Again, I wanna extend my congratulations on behalf of Harvey Mount Photo Center and SF Recreation and Parks Department. Um, it is a really, it is a treasure. It is a blessing that we all move this work forward into, which is all of our histories and the uh, folks that are following behind us, that this message and this beautiful work is basically shared with our community and society. I think images have the power to change opinion, to change history. We know that. I'm so lucky to have been part of that with the Harvey Milk Photo Center over the last 11 years. And I do plan on being connected with it, with the nonprofit going forward. Um, I thank you all today for being part of this really important presentation. And I look forward to seeing you all in the near future. Thank you so much for joining thank, us today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dave. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was my pleasure. Bye. Congratulations, David and Jackie and Candace and your entire family. Uh, this is a very deserving honor and only part one. We will. Uh, we look forward to seeing many of you in person, uh, hopefully in the fall. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks, Chris. Thank you, Melissa, for everything. Thank you all. See you, David and Jackie. We'll cross paths.